The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. Hello everyone and welcome to Tokocast Reviews episode number 142, yes. Jiku Senshi Speedobon. Yes. Back to Metal Heroes. Speedobon with a returning actor from, actually a couple of returning actors. Oh, uh, well one of them, yeah I know. Uh, the other one who plays the titular character played Dan Iga from the second Metal Hero. Mm-hmm. And the one who played Helen played Annie from uh, Shelly Oh, okay. Or Shider, whichever one was third. Um, but yeah, and of course, of course. Of course. We're going to talk about it though, so we'll get to it later. Yeah, we'll get to it. Um, so would you like to start with the good or the bad? <laughs> let's start with the opening. Well, okay. It's fine. It's an opening it's from an the open. 80s. It's an opening from the 80s. It's very 80s. Like everything in this show, it's very of the 80s. Yeah. Especially, you can tell with the uh, soundtrack. My God, is that soundtrack? Oh my goodness, the soundtrack. Do we, do we want to start there? Yeah, let's start Okay, there. we can start with the soundtrack. Oh my goodness. It's like, it's like they gave the composer a drum machine for Christmas and he was just now figuring out how to use it. Because everything is the, drunk. This has one of the worst soundtracks I've ever heard in Soku. It's just so... It's it's all synth drums, yeah. and they all sound out of place. They're all atonal. And I swear, every scene is just punctuated by... It's so 80s. And it's so weird, because watching everything from this time and knowing a lot of the pop popular music mm. with all the city pop that came out around this time it's just like your favorite it's so or one of your favorites it's so there like you can hear it but man do the tv shows not exactly know how to interpret it to a theme song not to a theme song and not to a score no because the, the, like i said it's like they got the drum machine for christmas and they're just figuring out how to use it it's like hey look what i can do 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 so we're just so every it's like it's like the Birdman soundtrack, but awful. Like everything is just drums, yeah, synthesized not, drums. Not the best. Uh, I do want to talk about the suits. We talk about the suits minorly, and especially in the tier list. Yeah, not the biggest fan of them. And this is sort of a problem that I have with some of these shows, especially with the fight scenes. Um, oh yeah, it's. Well, I have things to say about them. It's the same. Hmm. A lot. Like, even Spielborn going on to the two ladies. Uh, it's just that, but pared down. And both Helen and Diana have the exact same suit. Mm-hmm. And it, like... They have different weapons. That's how you tell them apart. It's like old Ninja Turtles. And if they don't hold them, what do you do? You, so, you guess. You pretty much guess. Although, I did find out that the reason that, one, her name was Diana, and two, Diana Lady. Mm. Was a lady Diana. Mm. She was super popular. At the time, especially, so yeah, they named her after her. That makes sense. The show was eighty six to eighty seven, mm-hmm. so yeah. Shall we continue on with the bad then? Yeah, because I do have good things to say about this. I show. do as well. I do as well. So I'm gonna go with the story. The story as a whole, I didn't think was that good. Not the overarching one. The o- the overarching one, and also the twist at the end. The twist at the end made no sense. My, my, my rea- if you have a big twist like that in the final episode, my re- my reaction should not be, wow, that's dumb. I, I, was, I watched it like an hour and some change ago, and yeah. I was like, what? Huh? <laughs> what happened? What was that? But clean is the future Earth and all of that. And I'm just like, I feel like you could have done something with that when you introduced Guillotine. Hmm. Who was, in, in all honesty, admittedly... A good character. I really enjoyed him. Oh, did you know? Yeah, I enjoyed him for a guillotine. Uh, he was not my favorite character in the show, <laughs> but I still enjoyed him. His outfit, though. Oh, it's 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 the it, 80s. It, <laughs> it's not the 80s. It looks like a pro wrestler couldn't decide on a look, so he went with, I'll go with a little bit of everything. <laughs> what about all the things? What if I went with everything? Uh, another big, big minus that I have to give this show more than anything. What's that? You have Helen and Diana there. Especially Diana from the beginning of the show. There is a good word to describe them. And they don't really get any focus. They, they don't they, take they, a monster down by themselves. Mm-mm. It's always Spielbahn. It's always Spielbahn and it's always in the same way. It's always Arc Impact or whatever the hell it's called. 
And I'm just He like, turns into Darth Maul. He pulls out his dual-bladed uh, lightsaber. Which, admittedly, the first time was cool. Yeah, admittedly, the first time it was cool. The remaining 43 Three times, times you have to great. see it. Not so much. But, because it was just that. Because uh, it's the same finisher every time. This really feels like store brand Coca-Cola Toku. This is this the, feels uh, it feels like something that was this is, made. This is Doctor Fresh. <laughs> Doctor Fresh. Doctor Fresh. Yeah. It feels like something that was made to fill a time slot. Yeah. Like, well, we've got the we've got this IP. We've got space to fill. Let's make something to entertain kids in this time slot. It and it's weird because there are things that like actually really stand out to me. Seeing them get off the uh, ship to you know get onto the. The smaller ship yeah. that everybody else from Clean was uh, on, yeah, and then seeing like the people start singing, and then the ship explodes because they ran out of resources, and I'm just like, oh, so that's how that works. That's what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> I was not expecting that. I do not know how they went back to the past suddenly. I feel like that that, that part at the end was so tacked on, and they could not figure out how to make it work. Make it work. We had to give some kind of emotional impact, and this is the best we could come up with. Well, giving them white parents, that was like... That was a choice. Yeah. That was a choice. I'm just like... I, I, I mean, I guess, but neither one of them... They don't look like them... Yeah, it's it's like they pull. It's, it's like the, the mothers. They don't like their mothers. No, the, it's like they pulled a few random people from the green room and were like, uh, "You, you, you're here shooting a commercial. That's nice. Come on, put this costume on." And I was like, "Questions? Uh, no answers. <laughs> Just more questions." Hmm. Let's see what else was the I the, not- the action. The action was not. Good. The action is not good. It's there is a very poor sense of unity of time and place. I, you notice this especially in the first episode where we are in the frozen lands of Canada, which um, which you know they my, were in separate. My, my, <laughs> we were freaking Hokkaido, and you're just like, okay. Also, can we get Diana some clothes? She her civilian outfit consists of skirt, like a very a very short skirt, a crop top. It's it's like a high waisted skirt. It covers her navel, but she also has like a little short jacket. jacket. And it looks like it's made of the thinnest material you've it's ever like seen. No sleeves. And she's it's out there. It's not even a jacket, it's a vest. Yeah. It's, it's you know, like a halter vest. And she's like, out there in the snow in the first episode yeah, like, wearing like this. like episode two. Yeah. And I'm just like, give the, give sis some clothes. Yeah. They're, Let her put a jacket but on. They're, but they're out there in the snow in the frozen lands of Canada. And then at the end of the fight, we're in the rock quarry. Because dimension slip. Uh, is it Dimension Slip yes. or is it just poor continuity? No, they do a good Dimension Slip every single time where it's just like, we don't want to endanger the people or the places around us. I don't remember them saying that. that it happens in pretty much every episode. So they just end up going to another area, which is a rock quarry. Which is the rock quarry. Uh, there's a lot of wire work and it's not well done. No. Although, More- once again, it is interesting to see some places uh, in these shows. Especially, I remember there was one... Ep- uh, one episode this happened sort of late where they're like fighting beside these three big tanks mm. and the reason I remember those three big tanks is because they were also that same the same ones that they used in that episode of the Kaiser when uh, Marvelous got captured and John oh. had to save him oh interesting yeah so I'm just like oh that's an interesting location to reuse but the action <laughs> is uh, so it ruins that yeah, it's ju- just beyond, not just beyond, uh, Spielbahn. Spielbahn, thank you. Yeah, Spielbahn spends a lot of time flying through the air. He he has a tendency to get knocked around a lot more than most heroes we watched. Which is, it, which is, inter- which in, in itself is not a bad thing, but no. it's, in, it's interesting to see someone that they're willing to let get beat up more, yeah. th- more, he's, he like takes as much punishment as he gives. Let's also, it, it also way. sort of makes it feel undeserved when he does defeat the monster. It's a lot of cases because it, he just are repulse anyone. He always takes them down in a way that I feel they could have done at any time. Also, I will say this: the fact that they just had a single finisher, and this is sort of the problem that I've had for almost every single Metal Hero that we've watched, mm-hmm. is a single finisher, and it works on everybody. Yeah, for the most part. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, that's really boring. That's actually in, in, like exceedingly boring. And because it always takes place in the same shadow dimension. We're never getting any interesting, because, you know, you look at Toku nowadays, or Toku even, you know, a few years from now, 
you look at where they are when they finish the monster, it'll be in it. It'll, it'll at least be in an interesting place. I mean, we just watched, uh, you know, Go Ranger recently, yeah. and they'd be, you know, they're in the middle of a field, and then we'll cut to a shot of the monster, like, you know, critically wounded and walking away before exploding. It's not exactly it's the most well executed, like my but, it, but at least it's more visually interesting to look at than the same camera angle and the same black background every time. And, like, the same... Uh what is it, the interpolation of the explosion over the monster? Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, I'm just like, wow, that's a, a thing that I've seen 44 times in the show so mm-hmm. far. It, it just became boring to watch after a little bit. And that sort of saddens me because I do like a lot of uh, the Toku from this time period. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that just wasn't the best. I'm also going to say most of the villains... Oh most God. of the villains and most of the supporting characters and most of the main characters as well. They did <laughs> just straight up get rid of... Oh, boy. <laughs> what's his face? Daigoro? The inventor guy? Yeah, him. I was Mr. glad about that. Mr. Com- was, Mr. Comedic Relief. I thought he was pointless. He started off as, like, the he's the comedic character. He's the uh, point of contact between Spielbahn, Diana, and the people of Earth. He's always inventing things. And his inventions are not always successful. Around the same time that they really introduced Helen as a part of the good cast, mm-hmm. uh, that's when they kicked him out. In mm-hmm. all honesty, I was all the more thankful for it because he had two settings. Uh, women and beauty. And that was really boring. He was a boring character. Yeah. That was how they got rid of him. He's boring. I also didn't find his comedy funny. No. So that didn't help. It, it could be once again. This is a and there's a lot of children. Uh, he, he's got he's got like what is it like three or four siblings? He has one sibling, one sibling, and then her friends, pretty much, who are all hanging around his his inventor's workshop. And I'm just like, this character was tired then. <laughs> <laughs> this character was tired beforehand, but it also is one of those things where I think it's really a product of the time where that type of comedy mm. is in there. So I can only hate on it but so much. But I still hate it. It's 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 <laughs> the it's the type of comedy, but also like his performance style. It's very bland. I wouldn't say it's bland. I would say it's very like play to camera presentational. Yeah, like almost like children's show host. Yeah, kind of kind of performance. Not 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 saying that in a in a wholly negative way, but it's just like the, the big expressions and the takes to camera. It's a very it's a very big performance physically. Yeah, and vocally. I mean, like, one of the first things we do is we see him invent a flying machine and just, like, leap off of a hill and injure himself. <laughs> one of the first things you see. It, it just... Uh, he just wasn't the best, and I really, really, really am happy that they got rid of him. Another thing... I don't know if you felt this way. Did you feel like the set design was a little too cramped? Especially in that... um. Adventures. In the Avengers Workshop, especially because at any time they'll have like some. There, there are sometimes where they'll have like six, seven actors in there at a time, and everyone is just like, Whoa. yeah, because they're just crammed so in there like side. There's starting. so much in the set. There's so much on the set. There's like props and stuff obscuring the actors. The actors aren't positioned in a way that feels natural. They're just kind of like crammed in there like sardines. Yeah. Uh. Anything negative, or would you like After to After Helen the joined, she had nothing to do. <laughs> no more jobs. No more jobs. We'll talk about her in a second, because I honestly think she was probably one of the highlights. Okay. At least for the first part, but it's just like, after she joined as Helen Lady, she really did not have much to do, nor was she on screen a lot. That's, an, that's another thing. <laughs> Dimensional Warriors, you know, Jiku Senshi, Spielbahn, Diana Lady, Helen Lady. <laughs> Never do anything. <laughs> Quite the naming convention you've got there. Yeah, that was not the, not the best. Uh, it, it just makes you sad because I wanted to like this show a lot more than I did. There was a couple Let's of bright spots. We'll talk about them in a second. Yeah, of course. But, yeah. Also, I will have to say Spielbot himself, sort of bland. Just yeah, like his character. He's, in, he's um, not a very engaging protagonist. Just like his character in Shadivan, mm. I believe. When he, whenever he played Dan Ega, it was just basically the same thing, and that does make he sense. he is he's a lead character in a Toku show in the eighties, and that's it about shows. all you get. It shows. He's just very black and white good guy. He's he's good. He's I am good. Evil is bad. Evil is badong, and 
Evil is badong. Mm-hmm. Your favorite quote. It's so good. Um, um, and, you know, I, I am good. Bad is bad. I'm going to fight it because that's what I do. Yep. And I'm going to leap around and fight things and be a symbol for good everywhere. And that's pretty much all there is. That's all I got. The, you, you don't get the sense that there is any desire he has besides fighting evil. Yeah. That's the only thing he has going for him. Uh, I definitely can't wait to see the sec what comes next with the Matalder, mm. who is the Kiter. Thing is also apparently a lot darker, so I'm, I'm hyped for that. We shall see. But yeah, let's talk about the good. Let's do. Uh, I want to talk about Helen's story and the dad. Okay. Probably the best part of the first part of the show. Seeing Helen being turned into Helvira unwillingly mm-hmm. uh, by her father who was brainwashed into Dr. Bio. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, seeing her basically have more jobs than Tindo Soji. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, you know, just basically hide away for a good minute. I mean, as I, as I said when I texted you, you're the, you, I've never met anyone who loves jobs and JRPGs more than you. So, yeah, she's got to max them out, get that ultimate weapon. Yeah. <laughs> she was, like, her story and dealing with everything with her dad and not wanting to fight him and get him back to Dr. Uh, to ben Honestly, that's a show I would have rather seen. Same. A show about someone whose you know parent was brainwashed by the evil organization. They are in the process of being controlled and trying to fight back against it, and them just like drifting through through life, going from job to job. You know, meeting and befriending people. They're all sad when she has to go, but she can't put them in danger of her being transformed into her evil form. That's that. That's an interesting. Like, I would have loved to have seen that as a mini series or a movie. That'd be really cool. Same with her having to basically help Spielbaum, but not meet him at yeah. the same time by leaving messages around. I thought her the story, messages and her, her him just seeing like glimpses of her. Yeah, he keeps having visions, and then he running after her. And oh, Ellen, because she'll be turned into Helvira if, mm-hmm. if uh, he sees her by the Queen, who we'll talk about in a second. Yeah, we will. Um, I really enjoyed Helen's plot, and then especially when uh, everything goes to her getting freed from that and being able to turn into the head of the lady and then not do anything for the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. Sadness. Shame. But yeah, I really, like, that was a driving force of probably the first 31 episodes, mm-hmm. and I really liked it. Yep. Uh, I will say I like Guillotine. Okay. Emperor Guillotine. He was conniving. He just hated you. <laughs> with a 9.5 the only thing I hated about him was that goddamn gerbil <laughs> it was so stupid good stuff good stuff <laughs> but I, I really liked his personality and just how he was pretty much always going behind somebody's back and seeing them as basically nothing that's when the villains started really fighting against each other is when he came in mm-hmm. so it became uh, mostly the villain show on that part uh, let's see, what else? I would say the vehicle and mech designs. Yeah. I there, There's a lot of Star Wars influence here. Very much Especially so. since one of them is literally just an X-Wing. <laughs> the one that comes out of the tank, like the wings fold over. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. But overall, the vehicles, I think, are, like, ex- exteriorly, I think they're well designed. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, just overall, just good looking... Vehicles that are used appropriately, I think, throughout the show. Yeah. Let's talk about the big one. Let's talk about the big one. Machiko Soga is back. And they changed one whole letter. <laughs> to Queen Pandora. <laughs> from Be- from Pandora to Bandora years later. But Machiko Soga is Queen Pandora. She was honestly the reason I kept watching this show. Yeah, she's, she's one of the things that keeps you... Well, one of, if not the only thing, that keeps you glued to the TV because... Every time she's on screen, it's that gravitas, that performance, that chewing the scenery in the best of ways. I cannot wait to watch only her she in, can. in Dinsy Man when mm. we get to it. I'm so excited to watch her in Dinsy Man. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I loved was her. Was Dinsy Man before or after this? After. After this, okay. No, uh, Dinsy Man was way before. This is, uh, this this is 86. It's a, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, seeing her just... Like, the thinly veiled hatred of everything with such a nice exterior. I was like, oh, I am invested in her. Mm -hmm. This is her show. She is queen. But (laughs) I I really loved everything. Because in the the villain's lair, 
her she's always like on the stage. Yeah. Like they like they gave her her own platform to literally be slightly above everyone else. And just the way she addresses her underlings, the way she talks about their plans, just her her movements, her expressions, even like the fight at the end where we get too much Kosogas for the price of one. Uh, she was basically just like a she was mommy dearest. But with a lot less like overt hitting people. That's an interesting comparison, but yeah. She was very much so mommy dearest, but she was just it was it was so nice. But there was so much threat to mm-hmm. everything that she did that I just loved her. Also, the fact that she was water at the end of the show, mm. like basically just a personification of him, mm. of it rather. I don't know, but I really liked her. I thought she was great. Mm-hmm. I thought she was fantastic. I don't think we've seen that. We'll probably never see because we saw some of her in, as Queen Hedrian and um, Sun Vulcan. That's when the show got interesting when she came in. Mm. And if she's like that in Dancy Man, mm. I am unbelievably excited <laughs> to just see her every episode. I mean, if it's just her, I'm going to be excited because she's a great actress and it's we love true. seeing her. She is just fantastic. She is fantastic in this show. God, I love her so much. Mm. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that about nails it, yeah. yeah. She was the brightest spot, so yes. I got nothing else to say. Uh, next time, in two weeks' time, uh, join us for a stream, because we'll be streaming the next day after uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet comes out. Mm, uh, that's Saturday. Yeah. Saturday the 20th? 19th. Because that Friday is the 18th, which yeah. is the day that Scarlet and Violet come out. That would make sense, yes, thank you. <laughs> so we'll be streaming on the 19th, and that'll be here. Uh, and we'll be playing either Scarlet or Violet, I don't know which one, I know I'll be playing it. Uh, so Probably whichever one he buys. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Getting join Scarlet us for that. Myself. And then two weeks after, we'll be doing uh, Black Sun, mm. which will be our last uh, video of the year before we go on winter break and come back in 2023, bigger, better, stronger than ever. Mm. I don't exactly. know what the first thing will be. Oh, I think it ends soon. So the first thing we probably do at the beginning of next year will be Decker. Because I believe Ultraman Decker ends this month. Okay. <laughs> if it's not already over. It'd be nice to go back to Ultraman. Yeah. So yeah, let us know what you think about Spielbahn in the comments below. Let us know what you think about Black Sun for those of you who have watched it. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to join us all the things, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.